uh, I am M. Puri and uh, uh, I specialize in the teaching of polity governance and uh, uh, various aspects of social issues also, but I'll be taking polity and governance for you. And I also teach students uh, the optional subject of public administration plus paper one of political science, which I share with my good friend and colleague standing here in front of you, a very popular writer, you know, his books are also very popular, uh, Mr. Pavneet Singh, okay, a great friend and colleague, correct. So now, uh, today's session would be largely on polity and governance, which I'll be talking about. And after that, he'll follow it up with international relations in which this person is an, uh, my colleague is an expert. Correct. Uh, uh, is it all right? Back there, everybody is comfortable with this. That's perfectly all right, right? So now, you know, because I'll be your instructor and guide for uh, uh, the topic of polity and governance. So let's just first get a, a, a bird's eye view of ki, what can you expect from the teaching I do uh, insofar as your examination is concerned. You must be probably aware if you have done a, even a very casual scan of the prelims papers that every year around 12 to 15 questions, this is the average between 12 and 15 that come in the prelims from polity and governance. And if you add component of social justice, which is also a part of paper two only, you know this thing and add to that the third component of international relations. So then roughly 20 plus questions in the prelims are asked from this only, right? So on an average, as far as my part is concerned, polity and governance, you can expect between 12 to 15 questions. Achha, in, a, in a good year, about three or four years back, that was a good year for us, uh, that we saw almost uh, 21 questions being asked just from polity and governance. Right? What you can expect from me in so far as your prelims questions are concerned. Hear me out now. Understand this. I can ensure one thing and guarantee you this thing that you'll be able to answer at least 90-95% of questions in so far as polity and governance are concerned. Abhi ki baat kar raha, I'm talking just about the pre part, correct. There will never be a question in your examination after you have done my classes. This is something because I've had almost 20 plus years of experience teaching polity and governance. There be, you will never encounter a question in your final examination which the others can answer but you cannot. Okay, that much I can guarantee you. Plus there will always be questions which possibly you can answer but others can't answer. Right, you will have the information with respect to those questions, but rest assured on one thing, this is my guarantee, there will never be a question with respect to my subject, which other students, your competitors can answer, but you don't have, you don't, you don't have a clue about that. That is there, right. Achha, as far as your mains part is concerned of polity and governance, uh, I am uh, assuming that you must have gone through the GS paper 2 uh, syllabus. Everybody has gone through the seriously, have you gone through the syllabus? Have you analyzed the syllabus? Going through and analyzed. How do you analyze the syllabus? I mean, the first aspect of analysis is this only that the, sub, the, the GS paper 2 is divided into three neat compartments, so to speak. Alagi bhot neat nahi hai, intertwined hai. We have obviously uh, the constitutional law part, which is the so-called polity part, as you know it. Uh, constitutional law plus governance, that is one part. Then we have the social justice component and the third component is obviously international relations. Okay. In so far as my part is concerned, uh, one problem with the UPSC, the way it has designed the syllabus, uh, it is the problem is that uh, UPSC has perhaps done it deliberately or maybe by default the syllabus has not been very rationally designed or let me you know demonstrate my point. Certain topics uh, which ought to have been in paper 2 only that is the GS paper 2 main syllabus we find that those are scattered in the other three papers. Ideally they should have been in GS paper 2 only right. Let me give you let me give you a very elementary demonstration of this thing. If I'm teaching you about civil services, because that is a separate topic mentioned in GS paper 2, the role of civil service in a democracy. So once I'm teaching you about civil services, I have to talk about other aspects of services like, uh, well, uh, police services also. So I have to talk about police reforms also, aspects of the criminal justice system. This overlaps with some of the security issues which are there in paper 3. So ideally those topics should have been over here only. Then I'll also be talking about uh, uh, governance and good governance. No lecture on governance or good governance can ever come to a completion without some inputs being given to you on aspects like, uh, well, transparency, uh, accountability, probity, some aspect of ethics in administration, uh, corruption in administration, uh, well, topics like uh, right to information, citizens charter, social audit. These terms may sometimes appear to be Latin and Greek now at this juncture, but you fully understand them and I'll teach you those things, right? Now you can see that many of the, the topics that I just, just mentioned, these are also found in GS paper 4, 
right so i have to because you know willy nilly whether you like it or not i will have to combine these topics with my subject over here because no teaching of governance and good governance can be complete without those topics also being added to the teaching okay so uh, in polity and governance obviously whatever is mentioned in gs paper 2 from this particular area that much though i'll be teaching but along with that some topics added from paper 3 also and because i'll be talking about rights issues rights issues also overlap with social issues correct so some component of social issues from paper 1 uh, will also be brought into over here and definitely a major chunk of your gs paper 4 will also be taught by me because many of those components will be taught in good governance and governance correct that is so now let me uh, go a step further uh, you are all first attempters nahi uh, first attempt nahi hai aapka second hai first attempt hai uh, all of your first attempters theek hai that is so it's good to know okay so we can start with a clean slate for you people you don't have any preconceived notions or do you have some preconceived notions with respect to preparation for civil services kuch na kuch to sunte hi rehte hoge toppers uh, interviews and uh, guidance from others and so on and so forth i usually tend to believe in this thing that uh, in so far as the old jindal nagar is concerned this place is concerned uh, this is like a university the atmosphere here is very much university like you've seen that na bada university like atmosphere hai yahan pe and uh, whatever uh, virtues and vices more of the latter which are uh, there in any university like atmosphere are very much present over here also so wahi same atmosphere hai aapka jo ek university ke andar hota hai my basic uh, understanding of the last 20 25 years that i have been teaching and i have taught almost 15 to 16 years of that period in delhi itself i had my own institution earlier so my experience has been that there are principally three types of students in rajendranagar in o in the, the acronym is or so teen tarah ke bachche hote hain yahan pe three types of students those who are always asking others how to study theek okay? hai always seeking more and more opinions seeking more and more advice seeking more and more counsel from others and eventually ending up nothing but confused completely theek okay? hai a confused mess then there are those who are around those chai stalls jo niche milte hain na aapko chai ki dukaan hai who are always advising others how to study and telling them about the, giving their views and feedbacks of this teacher that teacher this book is not good that book is good you will find those so that's like 45% belong to the first category 45% belong to the next category and the last category is the 10% who actually select one particular institution they trust a particular guru they understand that this person is giving us the right guidance they get their books they get to work they don't allow their minds to you know be distracted or, di or diverted uh, in, in the uh, in pursuits which normally students tend to pursue in universities correct and these are the people who actually get through ठीक है नाउ इट्स रियली अप टू यू कि वेदर यू वांट टू बी इन द कैटेगरी ऑफ द टू फर्स्ट 45 ए एंड बी कैटेगरी और इन द सी कैटेगरी ठीक है वन वर्ड ऑफ क्वेश्चन हियर बिफोर आई स्टार्ट विद द बेसिक आईडिया अबाउट पॉलिटी एंड गवर्नेंस बेटा यू पीपल आर हियर यू कैन सी एज आई सेड इट्स अ यूनिवर्सिटी लाइक एनवायरमेंट यू विल मेक न्यू फ्रेंड्स ओवर हियर हां जी बनाते हो ठीक है माय माय एंट्रीटी टू यू इज एंट्रीटी मींस व्हाट माय अर्नेस्ट रिक्वेस्ट टू यू इज दिस प्लीज डू नॉट फॉर्म डीप फ्रेंडशिप्स especially across the gender divide to aap aage aa jao main thoda hindi mein bhi bol deta hu aage aake baitho bachche aa jao idhar theek hai hindi mein baat kar lete hain koi baat nahi padhaunga main thoda hybrid ho ke don't worry theek hai jahan samajh nahi aa rahi mujhe puch lo theek hai baitho aage to bachche maine jab bola na gender divide ke across yaariyan nahi banani dosti nahi karni kyunki wo aapki career ko aapke attempts ko kill kar denge ठीक है प्लेंटी ऑफ टाइम फॉर यू टू फाइंड योर बेटर हाफ सो टू स्पीक करेक्ट और नॉर्मली मैं ये कहता हूँ क्योंकि आई कैन आई कैन नॉट गारंटी दैट यू विल गो होम विद द सर्विस बट पॉसिबली यू माइट गो होम विद द स्पाउस एक हस्बैंड वाइफ के साथ आप चले जाओगे आप ठीक है तो सर्विस जो शायद मिले ना मिले वो तो खैर थोड़ा सा तो इस पर भी डिपेंड करता है राइट तो दैट कैन ऑल्सो हैपन राइट दैट इज वन वार्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू पीपल इट्स नॉट अ वार्निंग इट्स अ क्वेश्चन इट्स अ वर्ड इट्स लाइक अ कैवी आर्ट इट्स लाइक अ is like a uh, something that you should take care about uh, don't form deep friendships number 2 there is nothing called group study we study in groups study is always done individually not no harm in you know forming a group of two or three people you can coordinate your efforts and uh, you can say ki okay, fine we'll meet ev uh, uh, every weekend and we will compare our notes and if there is something on which i am not able to understand comprehensively you understood you always you know uh, try to help each other out itna kar sakte ho but there is nothing called group study like three or four people sitting together in a room and studying nothing will happen you will end up wasting almost half or maybe more than that of your time also so study independently 
ٹھیک ہے تھرڈلی ناؤ دس از سم تھنگ وچ از نیچر آل دو کورس آئی ایم لائک ٹو اسٹائل مائی سیلف از اے فیمنسٹ پرسن بگ سپورٹر آف ویمن امپاورمنٹ بٹ یہ وارننگ شاید میلس کے لیے زیادہ ہے مینی آف یو آر ٹپلرز ٹپلر کیا ہوتا ہے آپ کی انگریزی میں امپروو کروں گا بچے آپ نے انگلش میڈیم میں اپیئر ہونا ہے واٹ از اے ٹپلر شراب پینے والا ٹھیک ہے دا ون ہو از اکسٹم ٹو اوکیجنل ڈرنکنگ بٹ دا پرابلم از دیٹ اوکیژن کمز آل ٹو فریکوینٹلی ٹھیک ہے سو ایز رنس دا جوک ود رسپیکٹ ٹو اے پنجابی ہو واز آسٹ بائی ڈاکٹر ڈو یو ڈرنک ہی سیڈ یس آئی ڈرنک اوکیجنلی کہتے کون سے کون سے اوکیژن پہ پیتے ہو تو جس دن اوور کاسٹ ہوتا ہے اور جس دن چاندنی رات ہوتی ہے تو ایوری ڈے از اے مون لیٹ نائٹ تو دا ڈے اٹ از اوور کاسٹ تو دین آلسو یو نیڈ بی ڈرنکنگ یو گاٹ دی آئیڈیا مائی ریکویسٹ ٹو یو ٹو ناٹ ڈرنک از پرنسپلی ٹیلر ٹو ناٹ آئی ایم ناٹ یو نو گیونگ یو دس ایڈوائز فار مینی اسپرچل اور ریلیجیس پرسپیکٹو مائی پوائنٹ از دیٹ مینی آف یو آر ان دا ہیبٹ آف ڈرنکنگ اینڈ آئی کین انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ ایف یو کم فرام انجینئرنگ کالج ہاسٹلس میں جانتا ہوں وہاں پہ آتے پڑھ جاتی ہیں مینی آف یو مسٹ بی انجینئرس ٹھیک ہے اور انجینئرنگ کالج میں کیا ہوتا ہے پڑھائی کے علاوہ سب کچھ ہوتا ہے یو نو دس تھنگ یو نو ہاؤ یو کلیئر یور سیمسٹر ایگزامینیشن آخری پانچ سات دن میں پڑھ کے وی نو دیٹ آل دوز تھنگس رائٹ اینڈ یو نو واٹ ہیپنز ان انجینئرنگ کالج میں ٹھیک ہے دیٹ از دیر سو بٹ ناؤ اٹ از ٹائم ٹو گیو اپ دیٹ ہیبٹ سو یو نو دا سمپل لاجک آئی ایم ٹرائنگ ٹو اپلائی اوور ہیئر از دس اونلی ایک ہی لاجک ہے اس کو چھوڑنے کا کہ الکوہل آلٹرز یور برین کیمسٹری اینڈ ایف یو کنزیوم اٹ ریگولرلی اٹ ول آلسو اٹ ول آلسو کمپرومائز یور ابلٹی ٹو کمپریہینڈ سمجھنے کی یاد کرنے کی ریٹینشن کی جو میمرائزیشن کی کیپیسٹی ہے اس کو بہت ویک کرتا ہے ٹھیک ہے سو پیورلی فرام دی ایگزام پوائنٹ آف ویو اینڈ یو نو دس شوڈ بی سم تھنگ لائک اے موٹیویشن آلو آئی ڈیڈ سیٹ سی دس تھنگ سوری دیٹ دس از اے وارننگ موسٹلی فار دا میلس بٹ آج کل ویمن لپ کا زمانہ ہے تو اف سم لیڈیز اوور ہیئر آر آلسو ان دا ہیبٹ آف دیٹ سو کالڈ اوکیجنل ڈرنک سو پلیز گیو اٹ اپ اینڈ ون مور تھنگ وین یو گیٹ سلیکٹڈ نو کیپ دس ایز سورس آف انسپریشن فار یور سیلف کہ ناؤ ایم گو ٹو کوئٹ ڈرنکنگ آئی ول ہیو مائی نیکسٹ ڈرنک وٹ ایور یو ڈرنک وٹ ایور کائنڈ آف الکوہل اور پوائزن یو لائک ٹو اسپوائل یور باڈی ود دیٹ یو ول ڈرنک دا ڈے یو سی یور نیم ان دا میرٹ لسٹ ہیل آئی ہیو اے ڈرنک ود یو دیٹ ڈے ونس یو سی یور نیم ان دا میرٹ لسٹ ٹھیک ہے سو کوئٹ ایف یو کین دیٹ از اٹ ول بی اے گڈ تھنگ حالانکہ آئی کین انڈرسٹینڈ دیٹ ایوری بڈی از ویری تھک اسکن ٹو ڈے تو بات ہو رہی ہوگی سر ڈز انڈرسٹینڈ دا پریشرز اینڈ دا ریگرز آف پریپریشن سم ٹائمز وی آر انڈر سو مچ اسٹریس ٹھیک ہے تو بٹ دس از گوئنگ ٹو بی اے اسٹریس فل ایکسپیرینس وین اٹ کمس ٹو سول سروس پریپریشن وہ تو ہوگا ہی ہوگا ٹھیک ہے سو گڈ تھنگز ان لائف ڈونٹ کم ایزی تھوڑا ہارڈ ورک تو کرنا پڑے گا دیر آر نو شارٹ کٹس ٹو سکسیس اینڈ دیر آر ڈیفینیٹلی نو شارٹ کٹس ٹو سکسیس ان دس ایگزامنیشن ٹھیک ہے نو لیٹ می کم ٹو دا موڈ پوائنٹ آف ہیلپ آئی ہیو ڈن انف سرمنائزنگ بہت سرمنائزنگ کر لی پرمیشن دے رہی ہے آپ کو اب تھوڑا موڈ پوائنٹ پہ آتے ہیں سلیبس کے بیٹا ایک بات بتاؤ مجھے If there is one particular paper out of the four papers of general studies, four papers are general studies. Ke. Un mein se ek paper, if you are supposed to, if you are asked to isolate with which every student from any background, whether engineering, science, humanities background, has some degree of familiarity. Ab ek baat batao, I am asking a very elementary question to you, ki if you have to isolate or pick out one particular paper out of the four papers of GS, one, two, three, four, with which if you look at the content of the syllabus with which everyone has some degree of familiarity it is gs paper 2 isn't that right yes paper 2 hi to hai jiske sath sabki familiarity zyada hai sabko pata hai thoda bahut panchayati raj kya hai president council of ministers home minister uh, well judiciary parliament on a daily basis you are reading newspapers what's a newspaper newspaper is actually i i i look at a newspaper as a book published on gs paper 2 with a fresh edition every day because most of the news items barring the indian economics news the indian economy news the economy component the business component of the newspaper most of the uh, uh, your news they deal with primarily aspects of those topics which are in gs paper two only right you all have the highest degree of familiarity with this paper which i teach what is the level of familiarity with the fourth paper wo to bilkul naya hai gs paper 4 ethics to kisne graduation level pe nobody has studied ethics also you know this thing kisne padha hi nahi hai wo to entirely new hai no familiarity is there انڈین اکانمی سے سب بھاگتے ہیں ٹھیک ہے دیٹ از سم تھنگ اگین یو نو اسپیشلی فار ایون اسٹوڈنٹس آف ہیومینٹیز ہو ہیو ناٹ ٹیکن اکنامکس ان دیئر بی اے پاس کورسز تو ان کو اکنامکس سے بہت ڈر لگتا ہے 
साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इज एंटायरली कंटेम्प्रेरी करेक्ट इफ यू कम टू पेपर वन तो ठीक है यू मे नो सम एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ हिस्ट्री बट देन पीपल आर नॉट वेरी फेमिलियर विद द नोशन ऑफ कल्चर वहाँ बहुत प्रॉब्लम आती है इंडियन कल्चर में देन यू ऑल्सो हैव प्रॉब्लम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वर्ल्ड हिस्ट्री यू गॉट माई पॉइंट ना सो यू सी दिस थिंग इफ यू लुक एट ऑल दी अदर पेपर्स ऑफ जनरल स्टडीज यू सी दट द हाइस्ट डिग्री ऑफ फेमिलियरिटी इज ऑब्वियसली विद माई पेपर राइट द पेपर विच मी एंड पब्लिक टीचर्स करेक्ट बट येट आइरोनिकली पैराडॉक्सिकली लुक एट द कॉन्ट्रोडिक्शन ओवर हेयर सबसे ज्यादा फेमिलियरिटी मेरे पेपर के साथ है सबसे कम नंबर उसमें आते हैं वॉट इज गॉन रॉन्ग I mean, students have the highest degree of even I'm, I'm not going to say very deep familiarity, but the first-hand familiarity with everything that is mentioned in my syllabus. You know something about it, and the moment you're reading a newspaper, you're reading about something in your GS paper too only. Isn't that correct? But yet, the number of scores, uh, the the marks which people obtain in this particular paper, especially in the mains, are uh, disproportionate to this uh, extensive familiarity. बहुत कम आते हैं. Familiarity होने के बाद भी number कम आते हैं. Correct. Um, now you know the idea is this: uh, if uh, the students are made familiar, students are familiarized with this thing. Okay, what are the basic reasons as to why people tend to get poor marks in GS Paper Two, in spite of familiarity? So then, once we know the reasons, we can make our efforts in the direction of removing and eradicating those reasons. Isn't that right? Okay. तो फिर उन रीजंस के ऊपर आज डिस्कशन कर लेते हैं जो चीजें आपने अवॉइड करनी है पॉलिटी एंड गवर्नेंस के टॉपिक्स पे जो क्वेश्चंस आते हैं हाउ टू हैंडल द सिलेबस एंड द क्वेश्चन पेपर विल डिस्कस दैट एंड टू अवॉइड द मिस्टेक्स व्हिच मोर स्टूडेंट्स हैव बीन कमिटिंग अप टू दिस पॉइंट राइट एक बच्चे गॉन आर द डेज डू यू नो बैक इन अबाउट अभी आफ्टर द क्वाड फर्केशन ऑफ द जीएस पेपर क्वाड मतलब चार पेपर बन गए ना उससे पहले वी यूज्ड टू हैव टू पेपर्स जीएस पेपर 1 एंड 2 डू यू नो द काइंड ऑफ पेपर क्वेश्चंस दैट यूज्ड टू बी आस्क्ड इन दोस डेज I mean, sometimes I used to be so aghast and surprised and shocked at the UPSC at the level and the quality of the questions asked in the mains. ऐसा लगता था कि pre और mains के questions में difference ही नहीं रह गया. You know, you can expect a question like this in the prelims: which of the following is or is not a fundamental duty? But do you really expect a question like this, a 15 marker question, to be attempted in 150 words, which is asking you to simply this thing uh, enumerate the major fundamental duties in mains? This was the question which which used to ask, uh, used to be asked earlier, and I'm not talking about some uh, some time of yore in 1970s, 80s. Right down to 2010s also, this was being asked. There was once a 15 marker question, just this thing: What is a money bill? And what are the, what are the major fundamental duties? I mean, any person who has learned those 11 fundamental duties by heart, he is going to get practically full marks over there. You're getting my point. But do you see these kind of questions today? Not even for a second, right? Can you imagine they used they have asked this question about 12 or 13 years back when we had the two GS paper format? आप सोचो ये सवाल क्या है? What is this question? What a daft question this is. I am going to this is a this is a allegation I am making is a UPSC with these questions you were uh, screening people for the highest civil services. The question that came once was what are the major forms of oaths mentioned in the constitution? Schedule three talks about oaths. हमारे constitution में schedule three है. बाद में detail करूँगा. अभी वैसे ही बता रहा हूँ आपको मैं. Schedule three में आपकी oaths हैं. उसके अंदर किस किस की ओथ है मिनिस्टर की विच कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल फंक्शन आर सपोज टू टेक ओथ्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर मिनिस्टर्स भाई काउंसिलर मिनिस्टर्स एनी अदर फंक्शनरी जजेस आर रिक्वायर्ड टू टेक ओथ्स हु एल्स इज रिक्वायर्ड टू टेक ओथ डॉक्टर डॉक्टर्स बेटा दीज आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोजीशन कम ऑन डॉक्टर्स की जो हिपोक्रेटिक ओथ है ना वो यूर डॉक्टर अच्छा हाँ जी वाइस प्रेजिडेंट एंड द स्पीकर स्पीकर टेक्स द ओथ ऑफ अ मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट ठीक है, वाइस प्रेसिडेंट आल्सो हैज टू टेक अ नोट बट द ओथ इज नॉट मेंशन इन शेड्यूल थ्री दैट इज मेंशन इन द इन द स्पेसिफिक आर्टिकल इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सेम गोज फॉर प्रेसिडेंट बट यू इमेजिन दैट दिस वाज अ 30 मार्कर क्वेश्चन उस समय 30 मार्कर भी आता था जीएस में टू बी रिटन इन 250 वर्ड्स 250 वर्ड वर्ड्स लिमिट द क्वेश्चन वाज एज डाफ्ट एंड एज रोट लर्निंग मेमोराइजेशन वी नीड टू की व्हाट आर द मेजर ओथ्स मेंशन इन द मेजर टाइप्स ऑफ ओथ्स मेंशन इमीडिएटली द नेक्स्ट ईयर दे स्लाइटली इंप्रूव्ड दैट क्वेश्चन दे सेड Why are different forms of oaths provided in the constitution? Now that seems to be a, such a more logical question because oaths have to be the content of the oath has to be somewhat different from the others depending upon the nature of responsibility. जो एक आदमी ने discharge करनी है, भाई judge की oath will have to be different from that of a minister or from that of a member of parliament or for that of the president or the vice president. You getting my point? So that the second question was still a somewhat more Italian question, but if you look at the first one, thirty marker. What are the different forms of oaths? That was the time when a standard book, which is referred by everyone for preparing polity, 
which I refer to as the Kunji of constitutional law. Which is that book you refer to? Hmm. It was, chalo good, you read another good book. Or people used to refer to just uh, that other book, which is a very good book, where that is Introduction to the Constitution of India by D.D. Basu. Okay, wo padh lete thoda. Correct. So my point is this, even in those days, just this particular book was never sufficient. But it appeared to be somewhat sufficient. Right. Today, if you look at uh, uh, Lakshmi Khan's book, it can help you to prepare for prelims and that also only to the extent of 65 to 70%, not fully. For the mains, the contribution of Lakshmi Khan's book is a big zero. Right. Now, the problem is, as the nature of the syllabus and the questioning has changed in the paper, students also have to, you know, obviously readjust their strategy in accordance with the new type of question, the new syllabus which is there. Uh, most of the aspirants have been somewhat slow in adapting to this new environment, even though in you know, this new style of questioning, uh, even though this, this has been around for almost like 10 years now, when we introduced this four paper, uh, quad, this quadrificated format, but students have their own strategy, hai, approach hai, towards preparing this very critical topic of polity, constitution and law, uh, they have not altered it to the point that they can actually get good marks. They still believe you read Lakshmi Khan, which very often and wrongly they describe Lakshmi Khan as the Bible of the Constitution. Nahi hai beta, ek minute ke liye. The Bible of the Constitution is the Constitution itself. That is the Bible of our nation. You got the idea over here. Correct. So they still focus on that one particular book, and when they go to the main uh, appear in the main examination, eventually they cut a very sorry figure. Ki isme so the questions kya hai? The do percent question mein answer ho rahe hai. Right. What are the kind of questions that come today? For answering today's questions also, you need to have some understanding of basics of the constitution, which to some extent Lakshmi Kant will give you. I'll also give you, I'll also start from a scratch only. Yeah, okay. Correct. But the problem is today the questions that are being asked in the mains, from the basics of the constitution, the kind of questions which are asked in the mains are expecting you to, uh, to demonstrate an understanding of how far do you understand how the constitution has actually worked. The applied side of it. So let me exemplify over here. You read the whole constitution which is supposed to be read for your uh, GS paper too. Okay, Sara Paldia or Pata Laga question kya aga aapke mains kendra bhi pichha aya tha question aya tha. What is meant by the expression constitutional morality? Wo kahi nahi pata. Sara Samidhan Paldia, Sara constitution Paldia or Saval kya aya what is meant by constitutional morality? Pura president ka chapter Paldia. Usme Pata Laga, I think you're familiar with the fact that president and the governor are also given some judicial powers. Oh, power of pardoning, which is technically clemency powers. So, the president has power to pardon a death sentence, to commute a sentence, suspend a sentence, to give remission for a sentence, to give respite, reprieve, etc. All kinds of things the president can do when somebody approaches the president or the governor, for that matter, with a mercy petition. All judicial remedies are exhausted. Death sentence has come. So, let's go to the death sentence, to life sentence, convert, to commute. It goes to the very basic thing is everybody knows this. Everybody will read this from Lakshmi Khan's book also. So what is the question they ask? That on account of the several issues which have been risen in the context of exercise of clemency powers by the president, do you think the exercise of clemency power should be a time-bound process? Applied aspect of the constitution. You are still focusing on constitutional articles and provisions per se. The questions are being asked on how these provisions have actually worked. And in their working, what issues have arisen? And if these issues are troubling us, what steps can be taken to eradicate those troubles? You got my point? There has to be a radical reorientation in your approach towards the very idea of constitution and the law. What are the provisions with respect to governor? Right? Nowadays, because of the fact that at the governor's level, governor is supposed to be a nominal head, much like the president at the union level. But you can see that how the governors have been behaving. Right. So eventually the question that is likely to be asked is that is a more greater involvement of the governor in executive management at the state level admissible under the constitution? Aisa sawaal aayega aapko. Ki jo governor over interfere kar rahe hain chief ministers ki activities ke andar, ye jo concept hai, ye jo pura cheez ho rahi hai, ye hamare constitutional jo humara framework hai, usme admissible hai bhi ke nahi? You are getting my point, huh? So this is the kind of question that will come. But if you have just merely memorized the provisions with respect to the governor's position, so this can't answer. Ho sakta. Okay? First reason, we have not been able to alter our approach. Uh, that will be my responsibility to make sure that your approach gets radically reoriented. Okay? Number two, poor interpretation 
of the questions. Number two, when you first you have to interpret the question. If you interpret the question wrongly, so then you will be writing some answer, but perhaps not to that question. Yeh yoga na? Sawal ko interpret karna is the, the first battle. After that, the second battle is obviously to write the answer. Correct? I used to hold a test series back then, when I was teaching public administration in Delhi. A test series hoti thi, which I used to correct the papers myself. In those papers, one standard remark was always there in every student's paper with respect to some question or the other. A standard remark message aata tha, please answer the question. Sawal kuch pooch raha hai, aapki kya interpretation hai, aap kuch answer kar raha hai. Okay? Let me give you some examples over here. Uh, last year there was a question in the mains. Critically examine the procedures through which the President of India and the President of France are elected. Last year there was a question and that was a, you can say it's a question from current affairs also because last year French presidential election was also held. Okay? What is this question expecting of you? What is the demand of this question? The, uh, uh, examine the differences or critically examine the procedures through which the President of India and the President of France are elected. Most people thought that this is a question on parliamentary versus presidential form of government. But it could be not. This was a simple question on look at the procedure, the electoral college based procedure for the election of the president. What are the issues in that process versus the procedure for the election of the French president, which is a direct election. Correct. And it's a two round election. Are you familiar with this thing? Asha, France better as a hota hai, when two candidates, two or two, multiple candidates contest elections to get elected because people vote directly for the president. Correct. So if somebody has to get elected in France as president, he has to get the majority of votes. 50% plus one chahiye usko. If nobody gets 50% plus one and indeed nobody has gotten over the last several decades also, then all the other candidates uh, except the top two, the top two ones are uh, eliminated except the top two. Then the top two are made to go into a second round of election in which thus two candidates contest, number one and two. Jab doi honge to somebody will get majority. What issues come from this two round ballot system? You getting my point over here na? So the question was talking about what? Critically examine the procedures. And I don't know by what stretch of imagination some students were interpreting this to mean that this is a question expecting you to answer on difference between or distinction between your parliamentary versus presidential form of government. Let me give you one more example. There was a question once, some time back. The process of social change in this country is slow. Slow, yeah. Social change, I'm not talking about socio-economic change, social change, which means attitudes of people, let us say towards women, uh, towards Dalits, towards uh, backward classes, towards uh, minorities, etc., etc. Process of social change is slow. To what extent do you think cadre-based civil service in India is responsible for it? This is question GS2. To what extent do you think that cadre-based civil service in India is responsible for this? And you know, our civil service has parent practically, I hope uh, you will not make these mistakes. The moment you come across the word cadder, I will opt for my state cadder. State cadder will be posted in my own district. Is there, are you not familiar with this thing? If you are born, you have been brought up in a particular city or district, you will not be posted in any position in that city or district as an IAS or IPS officer because the problem is, Okay. So you are not allowed to be posted like this, but you can get your own state card. State card will get you. It will get you. Okay. What is this question saying? That social change process is slow. To what extent cadre based civil service is responsible for it? The moment students saw the word cadre, a word was taken. Cadre. Achha, all India services. What are all India services? What are all India services? See? Poor interpretation of the question. I just proved it over here. Did I ask you to give me examples of all India services? I asked you what is meant by this term all India services. All India services are those services to which recruitment and training is done by the center, but they are they have an obligation to serve under both the center and state governments. These are all India services. Aap example de ho. The problem is this only na. Your interpretation is always based on your perception and your perception is based on your past experiences. Aapke dimang mein kader aaya? Aapne kaha, what are all India services? IES, IPS, Indian Forest Service. Main kuch aur puch raho. Right. Perceptual distortions create interpretational dilemmas. Your perception is wrong and perception is wrong. 
क्योंकि जब भी आपने ऑर्डिनरी सर्विस का नाम सुना है दिमाग में एक ही जवाब आता है आई एस आई पी एस फॉरेस्ट सर्विस एक मैं बड़ा स्टैंडर्ड सा एक क्वेश्चन क्लास में पूछता हूँ आई बिलीव सम ऑफ यू मे है माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर ऑल्सो तो उसमें मैं एक क्वेश्चन पूछता हूँ जस्ट टू डेमोस्ट्रेट ओवर हेयर हाउ परसेप्शन और द लैक ऑफ इट और इन एक्यूरेट परसेप्शन कैन डिस्टॉर्ट इंटरप्रटेशन कंप्लीटली द सेम क्वेश्चन एम समी इज ऑलरेडी हर दिस फ्रॉम माई माउथ अर्लियर प्लीज डोट रिस्पॉन्ड लेट दी अदर रिस्पॉन्ड ओके हेयर गोज सोशल एक्सपेरिमेंट इन द क्लास टेक टू एपल्स आउट ऑफ थ्री How many are left with you? यार थ्री कहां से आ गए टेक टू एपल्स आउट ऑफ थ्री हाउ मनी आर लेफ्ट विद यू वन टू वंडरफुल सुना हुआ है मेरा क्वेश्चन ये पहले ठीक है सुना हुआ है ये देखो सुना हुआ है बच्चे ने ठीक है मोस्ट पीपल इंटरप्रेट दिस टू बी अ मैथमेटिक्स क्वेश्चन बिकॉज योर पास एक्सपीरियंस विद सच स्टेटमेंट इज ये मैथ्स के क्वेश्चन की स्टेटमेंट होती है टेक टू एपल एपल आउट ऑफ थ्री हमने लेफ्ट विद यू वन वट डाइ से टेक टू एपल आउट ऑफ थ्री यू टेक हमने लेफ्ट विद यू टू बट योर परसेप्शन वॉज डिस्टॉर्टेड बिकॉज ऑफ योर पास एक्सपीरियंस विद दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेटमेंट ठीक है कैडर बेस्ड सिविल सर्विस इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर टू सम एक्सटेंट फॉर स्लो पेस ऑफ सोशल चेंज इन अर कंट्री that expression cadre based civil service by no stretch of imagination is talking about the cadre allocation process for all india services cadre is a word that simply means a group theek hai acha if you want to bring about socio economic change in society the people responsible for implementing programs and various welfare schemes and initiatives shouldn't they be the people who know best how to implement them is that right आपने सोशल चेंज करना है इकोनॉमिक चेंज करना है तो उसकी जो पॉलिसीज एंड जो उसके प्रोग्राम्स हैं इंप्लीमेंट करवाने हैं तो भाई उसको यू हैव टू सी कि विच पर्सन हैज द बेस्ट क्वालिफिकेशन एक्सपीरियंस एक्सपर्टीज टू टू फाइनली इंप्लीमेंट दैट काइंड ऑफ प्रोग्राम उसी को देखोगे ना किसी और को तो नहीं देखोगे ठीक है हमारे यहाँ देखा नहीं जाता फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑल गवर्नमेंटल पोजिशन इन इंडिया आर मोनोपोलाइज बाय जस्ट वन ग्रुप ऑल गवर्नमेंटल पोजिशन इन इंडिया आर मोनोपोलाइज बाय वन ग्रुप What is that group? Civil servants. Civil servants. Every governmental position is monopolized by civil servants. अब वो थोड़ी बहुत लेटर एंट्री शुरू हुई है बाहर से सीनियर लेवल्स पे लेके आ रहे हैं दो चार बट वो तो बहुत कम है यू गॉट माई पॉइंट ना सो वट इज हैपनिंग इफ देर इज अ पर्सन हु हैज द राइट क्वालिटी एंड एक्सपर्टीज एंड क्वालिफिकेशन आउटसाइड द सिविल सर्विस हुन पहैप्स बेटर टू जस्टिस टू अ वेलफेयर प्रोग्राम उसको तो हम कंसिडर भी नहीं करेंगे वी विल से हुज टू बिकम द डायरेक्टर ऑफ नमामी गंगे फाइंड आउट सम आई एस ऑफिसर कैडर मीन अ ग्रुप द फर्स्ट लेवल ऑफ इंटरप्रटेशन ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज वॉट दैट कैडर बेस्ड वॉट इज कैडर बेस्ड सिविल सर्विस कैडर मीन अ ग्रुप वन ग्रुप ऑफ सिविल सर्वेंट्स दैट दे मोनोपोलाइज ऑल गवर्नमेंटल पोजिशन देन यू बिलीव दिस एंड आई बिलीव यू आर फेमिलियर विद दिस थिंग टू बिकम अ डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर सबका ड्रीम है डीसी बनना ठीक है वो वीडियोज देखते हो ना डीसी की एंट्री एंड ऑल दैट ठीक है गार्ड डोंट बी इंस्पायर बाय दैट नॉन एनीवे तो आर पॉइंट इज दिस थिंग Which which person, uh, which, uh, individuals are uh, qualified to become a district collector? What is the basic thing that you must possess to become a district collector? You should be an IAS officer. Different districts present different types of challenges, correct? Maybe there is an IPS officer who can better manage a district, but IPS officer will never be appointed as a district collector. He can at most be appointed as an SP of a district. Isn't that right? So what are we looking for? The moment a district collector's position falls vacant, they go, which is the next IAS officer due for promotion. We don't look for the best man in the job. We look for somebody who belongs to a service and has some degree of seniority. When you don't look for people who are best fit for the job, those jobs, if if uh, uh, those positions in which responsibilities are such, if they are discharged properly, pace of social change will be hastened much faster. ठीक है तो बेटा कैडर बेस्ड सिविल सर्विस का क्वेश्चन ये था जो गौर दिया कैडर मीन्स अ ग्रुप पुअर इंटरप्रिटेशन एंड देन आज समझ दो स्टूडेंट्स आल्सो कि आपने ऑल इंडिया सर्विस यू इंटरप्रिटेड द कैडर थिंग एज ऑल इंडिया सर्विसेज हाउ डिड यू कोरिलेट दिस ऑल इंडिया सर्विस कैडर एलोकेशन प्रोसेस विद स्लो प्रोसेस ऑफ सोशल चेंज सर कुछ लिख दिया बना के सर तो क्या बना के लिखोगे इसके अंदर यार यू गॉट माई पॉइंट The second aspect of the interpretational problem is which uh, my good friend and colleague over here, Parmeet Singh, will talk about as I once I'm done with my uh, brief lecture over here. You don't pay attention to the directive words. Statement. उसका आगे क्या लिखा होता है? Elaborate, or elucidate, or examine, or critically analyze, 
or sometimes there's a very interesting statement and a very interesting phrase right at the end of it. A statement, do you agree? All these statements, all these, these are called directive words. Okay. For a question, if there is a statement which says examine, okay. And for the same statement, if it says critically examine, or for the same statement, if it says analyze, for the same three statements, the answers will be different. You don't pay attention to directive words. You just look at the question and then start writing anything that comes to your mind and whatever knowledge you have, information you have with respect to that question. Ek to interpretation galat kar rahe ho sawal ki? Oopar se jo uske end mein directive words hain, unko tawajjo nahi de rahe ho, unko dekh nahi rahe ho. Right? Penalty marks are given. You can ask my friend over here. We know that penalty marks are specifically given for this, that this person has not paid attention to directive words. Mark list aati hai na baad mein? Uske niche ek chota chota sa column hota hai penalty marks. Exceeding word limit and not respecting the directive words. Okay? Chalo aage. The third reason. Why people don't get good marks. And this reason is not just unique to general uh, GS paper 2. It is there for uh, practically all papers, including your optionals also, perhaps even your essay paper. Right. Poor articulation. Articulation kya hota hai? Likhne ki kabliyat. How to write. Correct. How much writing practice do most people do when it comes to your mains examination? Hardly any, I guess. Most people start, you know, writing some, doing some practice tests, etc. only after they've cleared the, cleared the prelims. And uh, between the prelims uh, result and the mains date, the gap nowadays is very short. Still sufficient. But uh, now the gap is what? Two months? Two and a half months? It's not sufficient. Okay, understand one thing. I may, when I'm teaching you, know that you're a good student. That you have the intellectual capacity to become a civil servant and become a good civil servant. When I'll be teaching you. Correct. I'll know you inside out. I'll know your intellectual capabilities. I will tell you, you are civil service material. You UPSC will judge you, not in terms of what your potential is. It will judge you in terms of what mess you have done in the three hour window period on the examination day. UPSC will judge you on that only. I have a example, I a standard example. Do you know that 100 meters race? 100 meters race. Usually a good 100 meter sprinter, the, the timing is between 9.7, 9.8 seconds. And just to you know, shave off that 0.1 second from to bring it down from 9.7 to 9.6, it takes almost three or four years of effort. Correct. So, what is it? Four years of back breaking effort. Olympics are Nine damn lonely seconds to justify your whole existence. For you, that is three hours for every paper. Eight dead salka back breaking effort. Finally, everything boils down to that three hour window period. What you do there? And what you do there? Depends not just on your knowledge, that is only 50-60% of the game. How you communicate it is even more important. Should I give you an example? But I'm going to give examples here. Very interesting. Listen here. There was a chap, there was a chap back in the 1990s. Mains there was 1995-6 ke under. Uske optional say public administration and English literature. Two optional used to be there in those days, right? He was appearing in his um, third attempt. Correct. All both uh, optional papers have two papers are there in optional paper one, paper two. Okay. Acha, while you are preparing for your second third attempt, na, usually the standard practice of most students is let us prepare seventy percent syllabus properly, the remaining thirty percent somewhat superficial, because choice is there, so we can manage somehow. Right. So the student he prepared seventy percent, seventy percent of both papers, paper one and paper two. Fine. Now in paper one. 80% of the questions came from the 30% he left out. First guy? But um, that was his third attempt. And his other option was English literature. His entire focus was now on whatever limited knowledge and information he can, he can recall, how to put it in the best, the most eloquent, and the most sophisticated, and the most damn refined Victorian English. Okay. How he managed to combine Wordsworth and Shakespeare with questions uh, of public administration, only that person knows. Correct? Paper 2 aya. He knew the entire paper. 
I mean, there was not even the need to exercise that choice, uh, that choice option. In the sense, this is what he was doing in the paper. Because he knew practically the entire paper, sare questions aate the, so he was practically doing this. He was keeping the paper in front of him, pen leke drop kar raha tha. Jis pe girta tha, wo likhte the. Sara aata tha. The whole paper was known to him. In those days, papers, uh, uh, your optional papers used to carry 600 marks. 300, 300, up to 50, 250 ho gaya. 50 marks have been shaved off of both the optionals, correct? So here, uh, out of 600, this person eventually got 366. In those days, they were unheard of marks, very high marks in public administration. Okay? Uh, very new everything, 202, 164. Obviously, he didn't know much over here. Now, be prepared for the shock. This is what he got here. This is what he got here. You assumed less marks would be there. 202 out of 300. In the paper, where 80% of the questions came from the 30% he left out. And that person did not eventually get through, is presently yours truly who's addressing you. Man, <laughs> that was me just to demonstrate how much writing ability matters. But I'm not expecting you to develop Victorian English author, the, 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 the quality of your writing ability should not be over the level of a, of a professional or successful author. But you should be able to express and express fast. 20 questions, particularly if you look at GS paper 2, Pavneet will agree with me over here. If you look at GS paper 2, there are 20 questions, each of them dealing with different themes. Aisi themes you know, the, very con the, the, the very uh, nature of GS paper 2 is that every question is like a short essay. So it's almost like you're writing 20 short essays. You got the idea? And most people, because of inadequate writing practice, they are not able to complete the paper. If you don't complete, nahi hota kisi ka bhi. And if the, they complete the paper, wo jo akri char question hote hai, they have attended in the last 10-12 minutes. Even if they knew the paper, the, the questions, they might not get many good marks in those. Writing ability is key. Now, the regular response that comes from the students to me is, Sir, kab se shuru karein? Abhi to syllabus start bhi nahi kiya. Be start your writing practice. Don't be fooled by people who say, first cover, six to, uh, cover about 50-60% of the syllabus, then start your writing. Nahi, start from now. Look at a newspaper, look at an article, uh, spend just 20 minutes every day, write that article, whatever you learn from the article in your own words, just 200 words. I'm just expecting from you 10 to 15 minutes on a daily basis. Once over the course of your preparation, you've covered around 30, 40% of the syllabus, then look at the questions. Hell, when I have covered a specific topic in this class, I'll be giving you a specific question or multiple questions which have been asked from that topic in the previous year's mains. You show me the answers. Start immediately. Don't wait for your prelims to be, you know, finally cracked before you put your pen to paper. Start now. If you do not develop your expressive writing skills, then what will happen is your one sentence will not flow in the flow to the other. Uh, there will be hardly any connectivities over there. You will lose the ability to express cogently. Ideally, kya hota hai? Every sentence should flow into the next sentence. A paragraph should flow into the next paragraph. Paragraphs are like subplots. And then finally, all the plots should converge into one grand conclusion. This ability can be acquired. You don't need two years to acquire it, but I believe you're going to be appearing next year. You have a good year's time at this juncture. For mains, tak to bahut time aapke paas. This, uh, this quantum of time is more than sufficient for you to develop uh, a level of writing ability, which is a uh, uh, coterminous or which is required for civil service examination success. Excuse me, sir. Huh. Sir, by the time you get back in paper one, you have over 200 questions. Huh. But what is verbosity? Expressing something that can be expressed in two words, you're using 20 words, so word limit cross cross. Where is the scope of the paper? So my question is, do you think that comment is enough or? No, see, I told you that I was appearing in my third attempt. So I knew something. It wasn't completely blank. Right. So but whatever information I knew, I presented it very well. Achha, one thing that helped me was for the simple thing because my other option was literature. So because of that, you know, as I said, uh, literature say uh, English theek ho jati hai because literature is an optionable, optional to then your English level naturally is a cut above the others. Right. That is there. Fine. Any which way. So that's the next aspect of uh, 
uh, your why people get poor marks, very poor articulation, very poor practice of uh, writing uh, your answers. This must be done from scratch from now itself. Correct. Fourthly, a poor understanding of the syllabus. Syllabus pada? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> This is a copy of the GS paper, two syllabus. I'll read the topmost part. Indian constitution, historical underpinnings, evolution, features. What does that mean? Indian constitution, features. That means the whole of the Indian constitution. Fair enough to say that? That means the whole of the Indian constitution. Sara panna hai aapko. If they've already mentioned constitution at the very top statement, the very top statement of the syllabus, then why are they mentioning specific topics from the constitution in the body of the syllabus? Be ek minute, ek minute. But I have a rhetorical question. Hai. Okay. You're not supposed to answer. Fine. Hang on. <clears throat> the point is this now. If they've already stated above constitution, which means the whole of it. Then niche unhone usi constitution mein se nikal ke specially topics mentioned kiye. Parliament is mentioned separately. Elections and representation of people's act. RP is mentioned separately. Civil service is mentioned uh, uh, separately, center state relations are mentioned separately, local self government is mentioned separately, judiciary is mentioned separately, machinery of union government is mentioned separately, constitutional bodies are mentioned separately. Why so? Because for those subjects, those topics, they expect your preparation to be at a level of depth which is more than the others. Okay, and what is the problem? A polity, I polity not have any question. The depth at which, you know, in that sense, I say that, you know, it's even wrong to call this paper general studies anymore. Aap civil service ka prepare karoge, Lakshmi Khan se kya karoge, there are specific articles with respect to, there is just one part in the constitution that deals with the civil services, that is part 14. Usme kuch articles hain. You read about them. How is all India service created? How is all India service disbanded? What are the civil service provisions with respect to civil services? Oh, basically, jo dead page ka chapter hai, usko rata maar liya, and you believe that you can answer the question. What question came? Cadre based civil service which no one had any clue. So the level of preparation now required is no longer general, especially with respect to the topics which are specially mentioned in the body of the syllabus, right? So that earlier polity centric, GK centric preparation will not do, but we are not even expecting you to prepare to the level that an optional student will prepare those topics. Now you have to catch a level, which level will prepare karna hai, jo typical GK polity centric or typical optional centric wali preparation jo hoti hai, uske beech ka level. Catch a level somewhere in between, right? So then naturally the next question is, sir, uh, where are the books for this? Not many. There aren't books for that. That's why. Meri dukaan tabhi chalti hai. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Achha, fine. So as I said this thing, that for those specific topics, you, your professional level has to be not that early polity, GK centric, basic knowledge and basic fact centric knowledge, but more in depth. Otherwise, how will you answer the questions like cadre based civil service? problem or you don't read the syllabus thoroughly. Every word in the syllabus carries a meaning. That is something from which the UPC says we'll ask you questions. If a word is mentioned there, question will be asked. E-governance is mentioned. E-governance, application, etc. etc. You'll start with definition of e-governance, benefits of e-governance, application of e-governance, application of e-governance in e-commerce, in rural development, in Panchayati Raj, in judicial, judicial setup, in the governmental administration, in central secretariat, in PSU, sab kar loge. Ek word miss kar jaoge. Kya likha hai pe? E-governance, models, comma, applications. The term mentioned is models. Models means approaches, theoretical premises. You're probably not even familiar with this thing that why should e-governance be done? On this, there are a number of theoretical approaches and there are a number of theoretical contributions which have come from scholars. This word is written in the syllabus. You have to read the syllabus. People just skip this. You have to read e-governance. E-governance, computer-based governance, internet-based governance. Governance with information technology, ko add kar do. Ban gai e-governance. You're getting my point over here, na? And then look at the application here and there in uh, uh, government, in uh, Panjati Raj, in rural development, or for that matter, in judicial setup, or wherever. But you don't look at the keywords, models. What is it? Regulatory, Listen, regulatory bodies, like TRAI, like insurance regulator, etc., etc. Regulatory bodies, regulatory and quasi-judicial bodies. 
you forget that in fact there was a specific question on this only what is meant by the term quasi judicial bodies partly judicial quasi quasi ka matlab partly hota hai na aadha judicial aadha shayad kuch aur of course i'll be talking about this thing in detail when i come to the specific topic itself so please understand and please also press your teachers for this you are taking any kind of classes for any kind of uh, uh, your uh, gs preparation or your optional preparation if you find that there is a specific word in the syllabus please ask your teacher sir what do we do with this word as far as my part is concerned my gs paper 2 teaching is concerned my pedagogy is concerned usme to sara cover karunga hi main because i know that they ask questions from those parts and those specific words which they believe students are likely to overlook read it carefully theek hai uh next point students don't focus on fundamentals you know probably many of you are from the science background i guess mathematics so science background se honge kitne hain engineering background se aajkal bahut engineer ho gaye hain yaar and normally say in rajinder nagar randomly throw a stone in the air it land on an engineer theek hai any which way bahut engineers hain no doctors here not you are doctor you are in the final year of medicine so you, do you know cpr agar mujhe cardiac arrest ho gaya class mein to kar loge bhai चलो ठीक है पीछे वाले जो है कौन डॉक्टर साहब थे स्पेशलिस्ट एमडी कर लिए अभी एमबीबीएस किया है अच्छा चलो दैट्स वेरी गुड यू नो द नॉर्मली से ना व्हेन समबडी इज टीचिंग यू फिजिक्स एटसेट्रा फॉर जेई और अदर सच एग्जामिनेशंस दे से इफ योर फंडामेंटल्स आर स्ट्रांग इन मैथ्स एंड फिजिक्स देन यू विल डू गुड कहते हैं ना इफ योर फंडामेंटल्स आर स्ट्रांग एवरी टीचर इन वु इज परहैप्स टीचिंग फिजिक्स और मैथमेटिक्स हैज द सेम लॉजिक टू एक्सप्लेन इफ योर फंडामेंटल्स आर स्ट्रांग यू विल डू इट राइट इफ इट इज ट्रू फॉर फिजिकल साइंसेस it is all the more true for humanities let me explain are you familiar with the position of speaker om birla ji speaker hai hamare ek do example de deta hu what is the speaker doing in the house managing the house you know speaker doesn't even have the right to vote right to vote on bills on debates on motions resolutions he has the right to vote only when there is an equality of votes when there is a tie he is not even supposed to participate in the debates he is supposed just supposed to manage the only time he speaks is when he has to discipline someone bad jaiye aap aapka time khatam ho gaya ab unko bolne dijiye this is all he is doing he never speaks he never participates in debates no contribution to any particular bill motion resolution anything yet he is referred to as the speaker why why is he called the speaker did this particular thing never evoke your curiosity wo bolte hi kuch nahi hai yet he is called the speaker kyun because the speaker's position comes from the house of commons england se borrow kiya na humne house of commons wahan pe is the equivalent of india's lok sabha house of commons se aati hai correct and when this position was being evolved because they have had parliamentary system since the 18th century correct speaker ki position aa gayi thi but in those days uh, a considerable amount of power prime minister's position was also created by that time but in those days a considerable amount of executive power still belonged to the king up to king is a nominal head pure and simple much like the indian president but of course in those days the king still used to have some real powers the king was the king's powers were gradually taken away by the parliament in a step by step phased manner in a gradual process but those are the days when the speaker's position was created king still used to enjoy some executive power so what was the duty of the speaker in those days his duty was that on any particular issue that debate has taken place in the house there are various sections in the house various parties in the house various groups in the house who have various points of view on a particular issue the speaker's job was to sum up all the view points and the points of view expressed in the house then speak to the king speak to the king on behalf of the whole house does the indian speaker in lok sabha today speak to the uh, speak to the president no even though that role is neither being performed even today by the speaker in of house of commons doesn't perform this role but the term has stuck the presiding officer is called the speaker this is the knowledge of fundamentals ek aur de do example theek hai let's see your let's just test your knowledge today our constitution came into force in 1950 26 november 1949 bol do yaar theek hai but effectively 26 jan 1950 what was the constitution of india immediately before that Britishers made some constitutions for India. Yes, they did, but they did not call them constitutions. They used to call them Government of India Acts. 
तो देर वॉज अ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन देर वॉज अ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट नाइनटीन ठीक है दोज वर द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ओके वेन द इंडियन इंडिपेंडेंस एक्ट वॉज इनएक्टेड इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन आई बिलीव जुलाई नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन इंडियन इंडिपेंडेंस एक्ट जुलाई नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन ऑल ब्रिटिश मेड लॉज इंक्लूडिंग द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट थर्टी फाइव वर एब्रोगेटेड खत्म ओके सो बाय फिफ्टींथ ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन नाइनटीन थर्टी फाइव गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया एक्ट विच वॉज द ब्रिटिश मेड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन our constitution was adopted on 26 november 1949 aapne kabhi socha hai ki when the earlier constitution came to an end and the fresh constitution got adopted so late in this interim period under what constitution was india being governed koi bhi nahi it was a like a vacuum an interregnum kuch hai hi nahi is not a very fundamental question to ask Stoke your curiosity. सोचो मैं तो बताई दूंगा आंसर थर्टी फाइव एक्ट केम टू एन एंड आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉज फाइनली इंप्लीमेंटेड इन फोर्टी नाइन एंड फुली इंप्लीमेंटेड इन नाइनटीन फिफ्टी तो उस पीरियड में जब तक नहीं इनएक्ट हुई थी अंडर वॉट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉज दिस कंट्री बींग गवर्न ऑन फिफ्टींथ ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन वी एडॉप्टेड समथिंग कॉल्ड इंडिया प्रोविजनल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑर्डर that provisional constitution order practically copied most of the provisions of the government of india act 35 only under that constitution we were being governed ye to itna bada gap aa gaya na beech mein bache these are the fundamentals i am talking about theek hai do you know president has clemency powers president has uh, the power to pardon etc but you would imagine this thing there is a three tier judicial hierarchy in our country there is a district court at the bottom and we have the high courts at the intermediate level we have the supreme court the district court finds that somebody has committed a murder homicide kiya hai homicide is a more technical legal term for murder so somebody has committed homicide or murder to usko de di death sentence district court found that this this particular case falls in the rarest of rare category wo hota na death penalty dene ke liye rarest of rare hai ye isme we will give him death sentence this man goes and appeals to the high court in the high court also takes around 3 4 years for the final decision to be uh, to be finally delivered and the high court also upholds the same sentence and he goes to the supreme court supreme court upholds it he files a review petition in the supreme court against the order of the supreme court you can file uh, a special request called the review petition to asking the supreme court to review its uh, its own decision right so the review petition is also uh, it also fails then where does he go you can go to the president you can go to the governor also you go to the president are we correct over here and the entire judicial fraternity of this country from here to here after the collective application of the whole judicial mind of every judge in this country from the lowest judge to the top post have found that person to be guilty of a crime so heinous that he deserves death sentence but suddenly when he goes to the president this person pardons him चलो पार्डन तो नहीं होता है यूजुअली व्हाट हैपेंस इज डेथ सेंटेंस इज कम्यूटेड कम्यूट द एक्सप्रेशन कम्यूटेशन मींस टू कम्यूट मींस टू चेंज द कैरेक्टर ऑफ पनिशमेंट डेथ सेंटेंस इज लाइफ सेंटेंस रिगरस इंप्रिजनमेंट से सिंपल इंप्रिजनमेंट व्हाट इज अ रिगरस इंप्रिजनमेंट वो हार से जेल में चक्की ठीक है ना वो हार्ड लेबर सिंपल यू आर सिंपली डिटेंड करेक्ट चेंजिंग द कैरेक्टर ऑफ पनिशमेंट नाउ इमेजिन दिस थिंग After the entire judicial setup and the three-tier hierarchy has found somebody to be so guilty of a heinous crime, deserving of death sentence, sitting at the top in Rashtrapati Bhavan thinks otherwise, just overturns the decision. Has this not question ever welled up in your mind at the most fundamental level? And this is not a power which is given to just the Indian president. Most heads of state across the world, including the American president, also they have these powers. Why such powers have been given? वो बात 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 की बात है पार्डन क्या होता है कम्यूट क्या होता है वॉट डज इट मीन टू सस्पेंड अटेंस रिमिट अटेंस रिस्पाइट रिप्री वाई दीज पार्स आर गिवन टू ओवर रूल द इंटायर जुडिशल सेटअप अ फंडामेंटल क्वेश्चन ओके द नेचर ऑफ द क्वेश्चन विच विल बी आस्ट ऑफ यू इन द मेन्स इन इन द नियर फ्यूचर इफ इट इज आस्ट ऑन क्लेमेंसी आई एम वेटिंग फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन टू बी आर इट इज राइट वाई सच पार्स आर कॉन्फर्ड ऑन हेड्स ऑफ स्टेट in spite of the fact that the entire judicial collective judicial mind has been applied to the case they all came to the same conclusion right up to the chief justice of india yet somebody is taking a very different opinion 
फंडामेंटल है अब इसके बारे में अभी अभी नहीं बताऊंगा बहुत लंबी डिस्कशन है तो विल टॉक अबाउट दैट लेटर राइट फंडामेंटल्स इफ दे आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री मैथमेटिक्स एंड अदर काइंड ऑफ फिजिकल साइंस सब्जेक्ट्स पैप्स ऑल द मोर सो फॉर ह्यूमैनिटी सब्जेक्ट्स एंड पैप्स इवन मोर सो फॉर द सब्जेक्ट आई टीच एंड येस इवन मोर सो फॉर द सब्जेक्ट माई गुड फ्रेंड टीचर्स इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन वेन यू से ना देर इज अ स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप द मोस्ट इनरेस्पॉन्सिबली यूज वर्ड you know even with the states we are, which are hostile to us pranit can vouch for this thing we have a strategic partnership with china also and then we have one with america also then we have uh, multiple with middle east countries also right. afghanistan ke sath bhi hai bolo aur right what is strategic partnership what are where does the relationship between two nations uh, when does it start earlier the, the, the starting point of a relationship is always this uh, well give and take जो आपके पास सामान है हमें बेच दो जो रॉ मटेरियल हमारे पास है हमसे ले लो म्यूचुअली बेनिफिशियल रिलेशनशिप ये धीरे धीरे ग्रो करती है यू एक्सपैंड द रिलेशनशिप इन टू अदर एरियाज देन यू गो टू कल्चरल कोऑपरेशन साइंटिफिक कोऑपरेशन डिफेंस कोऑपरेशन एटसेट्रा एटसेट्रा ठीक है देन यू डीपन द लेवल ऑफ एंगेजमेंट एक्सपेंशन क्या होता है कवरिंग मोर एरियाज ऑफ कोऑपरेशन डीपन क्या होता है भाई आज तो सिर्फ हम आपको छोटी मोटी गन्स दे रहे हैं वी आर एक्सपोर्टिंग गन्स and deepening of defense ties means tomorrow we'll be giving you sukhoi fighter jets also and we'll also transfer you technology ye hoge deepening so what is strategic partnership then ab ek hi stage bachi hai widening aur deepening ke baad strategic partnership dosti rishtedari mein badal rahi hai theek hai theek kya main theek hai said the right thing right he'll explain you better maine i'm sorry i paused on your topic theek hai now it is the time of judicial activism thoda ho gaya right very much right so fine और एक छोटी सी बात है बच्चे ये स्टूडेंट्स बहुत बड़ी मिस्टेक करते हैं मेंस पेपर के अंदर एक क्वेश्चन आएगा उनको एक दो पॉइंट्स पता होंगे उसी को डिफरेंट फ्रेज और डिफरेंट लैंग्वेज में बार बार रिपीट करते रहेंगे जैसे इफ आई आस्क यू क्वेश्चन हाउ विल इंप्रूवमेंट इन डेमोक्रेटिक डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन लोकल बॉडीज की बात कर रहा हूं हेल्प इन enhancing grassroots democracy and grassroots governance what is the significance of democratic decentralization decentralizing part to local bodies towards enhancing and improving grassroots democracy and grassroots governance kya karoge most of you will start with mahatma gandhi's dream of gram swaraj ye jo shuru karoge sare sab mahatma gandhi theek hai fir his dream of making the local people in rural india the masters of their destiny same statements why after that you know what happens when students come out of the examination hall this is the this this is one particular statement that comes from their mouth which is like a, a apocalyptic for me ki ye kya bol ke bol raha hai is question ko leke you know uh, very often students come out of the examination hall and with respect to the paper i think omni uh, will watch for it they say sir paper was very general what the hell does it mean to be a paper be general general paper kya hota hai It's a general question. What is the contribution of uh, uh, democratic decentralization to improvement in grassroots democracy and grassroots uh, uh, your governance? Is it a general question? General question is Mahatma Gandhi decentralization making people master of their own destiny. Governance comes closer to them. Participation हो जाती है. मैंने कहा तो एक ही बात बार बार वैसे ही बोल रहा हूँ. You're just using different words to say the same thing. When you are asked a question in mains, the examiner expects points of analysis. with each point being independent and different from the previous one more the points of analysis more the marks if you keep on repeating the same statement by using different phrases and different language and still thinking that you might be able to swindle and fool the examiner examiner see this aur wo hota na mains mein hota ki pre mein to if you do it correctly to one mark nahi kiya to minus zero whatever right so people generally tend to assume this thing in the mains If you are if you are able to write something in the paper, कुछ लिख दिया paper के अंदर तो 20 में से 20 में से तका start है ये भी right so 20 में से वो दो तो दे देगा तीन तो दे देगा नहीं भैया they they'll give you a big fat zero they know you are trying to fool them ठीक है so the moment you see a question in the mains now which appears to you that it's a general question. How does corruption eat into the vitals of an administrative setup? Discuss. 
फिर जनरल सर करप्शन पे आएगी हाउ डज करप्शन इफेक्ट द कंट्री बट जनरल क्वेश्चन है कुछ भी लिख दो इसके अंदर द मोमेंट यू सी जनरल क्वेश्चन अंडरस्टैंड वन थिंग द रिस्पॉन्स एक्सपेक्टेड इज वेरी प्रिसाइज दे आर आस्किंग यू टू गिव वेरी क्रिस्प डिटेल पॉइंट्स विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वेल रिसर्च पॉइंट एस टू एन वन बाय वन ईच पॉइंट बिंग डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दर हाउ करप्शन अफेक्ट दी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सिस्टम ठीक है नो जनरल क्वेश्चन इन द सिविल सर्विसेज If it gives an impression of generality, being general, alarm bell should you know start ringing immediately. It requires a very specific response in terms of very precise and crisp and independent points. More the points of analysis, more the marks. Comfortable? These are the basic reasons why people don't get marks in my paper. Some of the reasons I have expressed over here perhaps can be localized to the other subjects also. वहाँ पे भी, but some of them are specific to my examination, my paper. ठीक है. अच्छा, now when we start our classes, uh, I'll be starting your GS Polity classes. मैं ही शुरू करूँगा आपकी. Next Sunday I think, this coming Sunday in the evening we'll be starting your. I'll be starting with the regular classes. Tomorrow I believe you have introductory lecture with respect to another subject also, and then after that there's another subject. Other teachers will also get you'll get familiarized with the other teachers also. So that will happen. Correct. Uh, <clears throat> one small thing uh, students always ask me and indeed you should also ask this thing and uh, that what kind of books you need to study for gs paper 2 kuch bhi pad lo beta kuch pad lo you want to read lakshmi kan go read i don't stop people from reading books you don't read till doesn't matter i'll cover everything over here you want to read you'll be given notes from this uh, institution also you want to read that read you don't want to read don't read i never discourage people from reading books read one basic book but don't forget to read ncert 11th and 12th that's it political science books and please make sure you thoroughly read the book political theory i tell you why because nowadays they are asking questions like which of the following statement best expresses the notion liberty what is the theory behind the concept of liberty What is the theory behind the concept of equality? What's the theory behind the concept of social justice? वो सारा माँ दिया हुआ है। आप पिछले साल के तीन चार साल के प्रिलिम से पर देखिए इधर। Justice के ऊपर भी उन्होंने क्वेश्चन पूछा है। Liberty का क्या मतलब होता है और क्या मतलब नहीं होता है? All those questions by and large have been asked from the political theory book. It's a very small book. You will take no more than two or three days to master it. But that said, underline करके रख लो, बार बार उसको रिवाइज करते रहो। ठीक है? But what you have to do every day When you come to my class, you'll have to carry a copy of this book. You have to carry a copy of this book in the class. This is called the Bear Act of the Constitution. This is the Constitution and its articles. Okay, this is available in pocket book size also. But say is the pocket book one. I have a bit of an eyesight problem, so I have made a big. Its font is not big, but it's not much. It's available in the pocket book size also. Cheaply available, eighty, ninety, hundred rupees. I don't know around that much. But it's how much? One twenty rupees. Ki book hai. Please carry this every day in my class. Okay, you have sufficient time. Sunday I'll be starting my classes. This book has to be carried. This is a reference manual in the class. I'll teach you the Constitution from the horse's mouth, from the Constitution itself as it was written. And the good thing is, below every article in this uh, particular book, uh, this person, this gentleman, P. M. Bakshi, who's written this book. He has also given some uh, illustrations of important Supreme Court judgments with respect to that constitutional provision. This is, mind you, a lawyer's book. Okay, you are not supposed to read all those judgments. You will only read and mark those judgments which I specifically tell you in the class to do. Okay, NCERT 11-12, political theory. This is called the Bear Act of the Constitution by P. M. Bakshi. Please make sure you purchase the pocket book size version when you come to the class. करेक्ट अब इसके अलावा मैगजीन्स योजना पढ़ लो नॉट अ वेरी गुड मैगजीन बट इट इज एग्जाम फ्रेंडली इन द सेंस वी लुक एट द पास ट्वेल्व ट्वेल्व मंथ्स आई थिंक इट्स अ मंथली मैगजीन सो बारह महीने में बारह इशू आते हैं ना उसके तो एक छोटी सी चीज मैंने देखी है उस योजना के अंदर वट एवर आर्टिकल्स है पेड इन द पास ट्वेल्व मंथ्स ना If not in GS paper two, in some paper or the other, there is some reflection of in the form of a question from some article that appeared in the Yojana. It's just to be exam. This suggestion, this advice is purely because it is exam exam friendly approach to the extent that if you read all the Yojanas articles, because this is a government of India publication, so itra acha critical appraisal to milega nahi. It's a sarkari publication, yar. 
तो सरकारी पब्लिकेशन के अंदर थोड़ा सा प्रेज ज्यादा होती है क्रिटिकल प्रेज थोड़ा सा कम रहता है वो क्रिटिकल प्रेज हम किसी और जगह से ले लेंगे बट द ओनली रीजन आई एम आस्किंग टू डू सो इज बिकॉज देर इज सम रिफ्लेक्शन इन द मेन्स पेपर स्पेसिफिकली ऑफ द आर्टिकल्स विच अपेयर इन द पास्ट ट्वेल्व इशूज ऑफ द योजना मैक्सिम ठीक है और कुछ पूछना है बोलो एनीथिंग एल्स वॉट टू बी रेड वॉट टू बी सीन न्यूज सुनते हो इंटरनेशनल न्यूज कहाँ सुनते हो अल जजीरा गुड लक्ष्य अल जजीरा फॉर इंटरनेशनल न्यूज यू कैन रेफर टू फॉर डोमेस्टिक नेशनल न्यूज टूडे यू कैन रेफर टू नो चैनल आई एम सॉरी दर इज नो चैनल You can only use the newspapers for that purpose, correct? Because nowadays what happens is that dog fights and cock fights होती हैं वहाँ पे आपको पता है और इसके अलावा तो कुछ होता नहीं है, ठीक है? Since the time uh, Ravish Kumar coined the term Godi Media, Godi Media didn't he didn't coin the term actually. He actually translated an already existing English term. The actual term was lap dog media. Lap Godi कोई कहते हैं ना? तो lap में बैठने वाला dog तो lap dog Godi Media हो गया. अभी शुक्र करो उसने कुत्ता वाला term वो साथ use नहीं किया, right? So that is there. Fine. So uh, Anything else you want to ask? हाँ जी बच्चे बोलो अल जजीरा चैनल है बेटा उसको देखो ठीक है बेस्ट चैनल फॉर इंटरनेशनल न्यूज करेक्ट हाँ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लिसन टू सम वेब बेस्ड प्लेटफॉर्म्स विच टॉक अबाउट द इशूज विच आर रेलिवेंट फॉर योर सिलेबस तो यू कैन लिसन टू इफ यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन अ हिंदी वर्जन ऑफ इट सत्य हिंदी अच्छा चैनल है एक वेब बेस्ड चैनल है सत्य हिंदी यू कैन लिसन टू डिबेट्स ऑन द प्रिंट द वायर अच्छी डिबेट्स आती है एक्चुअली ठीक है जी Anything else you want to ask? Huh. Which newspaper? कोई एक पकड़ लो Indian Express ले लो हिंदू ले लो Indian Express is good enough, right? But normally लोग कहते हैं कि editorial हिंदू का भी पढ़ लो देख लो अपने friend का देख के अच्छा कोई relevant editorial होगा तो पढ़ लो नहीं तो रहने दो वन न्यूज पेपर इज सफिशियन ठीक है अंडरस्टैंड मान थिंग करंट अफेयर इज अ पार्ट ऑफ योर सिलेबस इज नॉट द होल ऑफ इट ठीक है प्रॉब्लम इज दिस आई हैव सीन स्टूडेंट्स स्पेंडिंग ऑलमोस्ट फोर आवर्स एवरी डे ऑन द न्यूज़पेपर यू आर ऑन अ सुइसाइडल पाथ यू शुड बी एबल टू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट टू रीड इन द न्यूज़पेपर देन इकोनोमाइज द टाइम टू नो मोर देन वन एंड हाफ टू टू आवर्स बट इवेंचुअली ब्रेक ब्रिंग इट डाउन टू इन अ पीरियड ऑफ फोर और फाइव मंथ्स टू नो मोर देन वन आवर बाय दैट टाइम योर रीडिंग स्पीड विल ऑल्सो इंप्रूव ना एनहेंस हो जाएगा तो नो मोर देन वन आवर ओवर पीरियड ऑफ टाइम बट इन नो केस इवन टू बिगेन विद मोर देन टू आवर्स हाँ जी बच्चे यो क्वेश्चन बैक देन हाँ बच्चे बोलो नहीं क्वेश्चन आ जाते हैं क्वेश्चन आ जाते हैं वहां से प्री में अभी तो बताया मैंने पॉलिटिकल थ्योरी से सीधे सीधे क्वेश्चन आ रहे हैं कर दो यार एट योर ओन पेरल आई एम नॉट सजेस्टिंग इट मेरे रिकॉर्डेड लेक्चर्स मिलते हैं प्लेटर पर उसके एनसीआर के मैंने रिकॉर्ड लेक्चर्स किए वो सुन लें वो सुन लो वो आजकल लीक हो चुके होते हैं टेलीग्राम वगैरह में मिल जाते हैं देख लेना ठीक है इकोनॉमी से हो जाएगा थोड़ा सा काम करेक्ट
from the field, I am having it to get to the okay, lane. That's not good. From around uh, 13,000. Now let me put your mind at ease. The real competition, the number of students who are actually preparing seriously every year is no more than 40 to 45,000. And there, out of 40, 45,000, if you can't come in 13,000, you can't come anywhere. This is the competition. वो मत देखो दस लाख अप्लाई करते हैं फाइव लाख आर अपेयरिंग इट्स अ नेशनल हॉबी यार एनीबडी हु बिकम्स अ ग्रेजुएट सिविल सर्विस का फॉर्म भरेगा ही भरेगा ठीक है वो क्यों भरते हैं आजकल बिकॉज़ ऑफ दोस मोटिवेशनल स्टूपिड वीडियोस व्हिच अपीयर इन द YouTube यू सी द एंट्री ऑफ आईपीएस ऑफिसर सी द एंट्री ऑफ आईएएस ऑफिसर दैट डैम हेल राइट सो एवरीबडी जस्ट विदाउट डूइंग सम सेल्फ एनालिसिस और सेल्फ इंट्रोस्पेक्शन कि वेदर ही इज कैपेबल ऑफ द एग्जामिनेशन और नॉट दे जस्ट फिल अप द फॉर्म वो आधे आते हैं उसमें से भी 40 पंद्रह हजार आर द वंस हुआ एक्चुअली सीरियस यू नो यू विल यू विल गेट अ फर्स्ट हैंड हैंड एविडेंस ऑफ दिस हैपनिंग इन दिस प्लेस और जिंदा नगर इटसेल्फ इन ओआरएन यू विल इंटरैक्ट विथ पीपल यू विल सी मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द पीपल यू इंटरैक्ट विथ आर एक्चुअली नॉन सीरियस हियर ओवर हि� who have already spent lakhs of rupees in attending coaching institutes and other kind of academic platform, etc. You will see first-hand experience, you will get evidence, you will get. Majority of the people over here in Old Ajinda Nagar are also non-serious. Okay, so effective competition between 45 to 50, 40 to 45,000. From And within this, you have to come in the top 12, 13,000. How many people are uh, uh, selected for the interview? The interview. Interview call, 2500 to 3000. Now look at the competition. Out of 13,000, you have to come in with just the top 3000. Where is the competition? That's it. And out of 3000, you have to come in the top 1000. One out of every three individuals are getting through. So I'm putting your mind at ease to make sure that you know, don't think of this as a Herculean endeavor. It is difficult. It is hard. But it is still just still just another competitive examination. No more, no less. Isko itna bada mat banalo che torgar ka kila fate nahi karna hai. Thik hai? Lekin difficult hai. It requires hard work because when you are competing among 40 to 45,000, they are all working hard. It's hard from that sense. Correct. Then you, when you finally come to 13,000, achha 13,000 mein, you know, you'll be shocked to know when I, when I say this, you might not even trust me on this. Of the 13,000, almost half of them are such, yes, almost half, whose mains optional is not prepared. Pere wo pre pe focus karte hain. Then they say ki pre ho gaya, then mains dekhenge. And by the time the pre, they, they clear the preliminary examination, the gap is too short nowadays to prepare for the optional. So effectively, I can tell you this thing, the 13,000 people who are appearing in the mains, the actuals, the actual number of people who are serious and the ones who are capable of clearing in that particular year, is no more than seven to eight thousand. That's also true. Imagine, I'm telling you that 40, 45,000 people are all serious, but the ones who are finally clearing it and reaching the main stage of 13,000, the ones who are capable of clearing because of their uh, poor logistical management of their preparation, ki pehle optional ki tayari nahi ki, fir wo do mein subjects pure se tayar nahi hue, GS paper for bilkul tayar nahi hua, and so on and so forth, blah, blah, you understand all these things. The real competition is again seven, eight thousand. And out of 7, 8,000, you have to come in the top 3. And out of 3,000, you have to come in the top 1. There is competition, but it's not Herculean. Okay? There is no world war to be fought over here. Just another competitive examination. Thank you for enduring me for such a long time. Okay? Right? Uh, I'll give it you over to Pamneet, sir.